Hello. Today I wanted to take a look at a slightly less usual red burgundy. Um, so I have here a bottle of uh, Domaine Vincent Jardin's Le Vieux Vin Cuvée 2018 Chassin Montraché Rouge. So uh, Chassin is, is con considered by, by most of us as more a, a white wine producing appellation. Um, but actually it happens that about a third, just a little over a third of the um, wines made there and vines grown there are, are for red wine um, from Pinot Noir. Um, the way the, the Appalachian works is that the, the soil types to the north of the village on the border with Polini tend to be more um, soft limestone that's well suited to making um, focused, pungent Chardonnays. Um, however, to the south of the village, the soils have a higher proportion of clay in them, sort of clay marl um, and some, some gravel. Um, and these slightly heavier soils are better suited, so many people believe, to, to growing Pinot Noir. So as I say, about a third of the wines from the, um, from the village come from these um, southern vineyards with more clay soils and are red. Um, the wines tend to be sort of quite bright and fresh and they can be um, a lovely pairing with perhaps maybe slightly lighter foods than you would pair uh, a wine from the Cote de Nuit but their vibrancy can make them um, a really interesting buy. Um, Domaine Vincent Gerardin, uh, interesting producer in terms of the, the um, approach that they've always had to quality. Um, Vincent himself sold out of the business in 2008. Um, this would have been made by Eric Germain, who um, had been the winemaker working for Vincent before he sold, um, who stayed on. And so there's been a continuity in approach and in quality that um, has remained after the, the founder has left the business. Um, this particular wine comes from, a, it's called a, a Le Vieux Vin. It, it comes from vines that are 60 years old. So that's um, helped to keep yields fairly low naturally. Um, but then the domain has done as much as they can to work with the grower to make sure that the um, the fruit they get is as high quality as, as possible. So starting with the fact that the approach is entirely organic in terms of not using pesticides or herbicides in the vineyard. Um, they've worked from the beginning to make sure that the um, uh, trellising is correct um, and that it's maintained in such a way that the, the wires are lifted when necessary and the um, leaves are tucked in so that the, the fruit exposure is, is excellent. When yields are set they'll go through and they'll remove any bud, any excess buds there to make sure that yields aren't too high. Um, and once the fruit is ripening, they'll go through and they, they may drop fruit if there's too much there. They'll make sure they, they may pluck leaves and make sure that the, the fruit is exposed. Um, and also the, the domain will determine the time of harvest. They don't just accept it at the time that the grower um, wants to send it. And, and often they'll provide a picking team to pick. Um, at picking, there are various steps of selection that, that they will go through. So the, f the fruit will be sorted on a sorting table and any um, damaged or unripe bunches will be rejected at that stage. Um, back at the winery, the um, grapes will be destemmed and partially crushed. And at that stage, they'll be put on a conveyor belt and, and in many years, they'll use an optical sorter if necessary, um, where um, computer controlled cameras will control a set of um, air jets that blow out any fruit that is the wrong size, that hasn't coloured sufficiently, or may be damaged. So that, that's a, you know, quite a stringent set of controls to make sure that the, um, the fruit makes its way into the fermenter in the best possible um, condition. The, the fruit, as I say, is, is gently crushed first, or the majority of it is, um, in, a, in a vintage where the stems of the, gra of the um, grapes are warm are ripe, when warm enough to ripen the stems of the grapes, um, a proportion of whole bunches will go into the fermentation, but it, it won't be a huge percentage of that. Um, fermentation takes place in stainless steel tanks with temperature control, um, and extraction is governed by pushing the um, skins back down into the ferment, or, or if, if greater extraction is needed, they'll pump juice over the top of the floating skins because the skins rise in the fermenter and 
they, they need to be kept wet and if you wash them that will help extract the colour from them. Um, at that stage, uh, oh sorry I should have said uh, fermentation all happening with the indigenous yeast that had come in to the winery from the vineyard. Um, so th they're trying to make sure that the vineyard is, is f as fully expressed as possible. Um, once the um, fermented wine goes into barrel for ageing, where it'll stay for 15 months, um, it, it's allowed to undergo malolactic conversion with indigenous bacteria, um, so there's, there's no inoculation to make sure that happens. Um, the um, malolactic conversion going on in barrel helps to um, make sure the oak is well integrated with the fruit. Um, and. Um, It'll stay in barrel for 15 months. About 30% of those barrels will be new oak. So there's not an enormous oak influence in there, but a little. Um, and then um, at bottling, the wine will be lightly filtered. They're not fined, um, so they don't like to take too much out of the, the wine. And um, bottling is done uh, sort of to, to try and be in harmony with nature. Bottling is done um, using a biodynamic lunar calendar to, to determine the date. So th th every effort is made to try and make sure that the quality of the fruit that they've um, taken from the vineyard is preserved into the bottle and, and it, it shows itself as the vineyard best expresses itself. Um, so I think I've probably said quite enough about that. Let's have a look at the wine. Um, firstly, the colour. The colour has a it's, it's a nice dark red. There is a, there's a tiny touch of purple at the rim. It's not a vivid blue purple. This is not, this is, it's a four year old wine, so it has a little bit of age. It's not browning. Um, it's predominantly ruby red, as I say, it's sort of purple, purple hints at the rim. Um, the colour is, it's a dark red, but it's not deep. I can, I can see through this really easily. I can see the stem of glass. There's no issue there about that being opaque. Uh, and if I swell the wine, um, the uh, there are some tears, but it, they're not heavy tears. The wine is only it says 13 percent alcohol on the label, um, and I'm not expecting it to be particularly full-bodied, so um, I'm not surprised that that's, those aren't huge. Let, let's have a look at the aroma, shall we? The aromas are predominantly tertiary developed. Um, they're sort of meaty notes largely. There, there are hints of cedar from the oak, um, but they're nicely integrated to a, uh, a red fruit there. It's, it's not really red cherry, it's not as juicy as that, it's more sort of a, a ripe red plum. There's a lovely richness in there. There are sort of chocolatey hints as well, which are quite attractive, and that's, that's part of the sort of the cedariness being tied in with the fruit, I guess. Um, so let's for taste. That's a, a medium white wine. Um, the, the tannins are very fine. There's actually quite a, a fair mouthful of them. There's a, there's a, a reasonable grip and a, a sort of a slightly spicy, cedary note to that. There's a little bit of warmth from the alcohol, but it's not overpowering. There's lovely fresh acidity that's actually it's lifting that fruit and. Whereas it had been sort of a, a little plummy on the on the palate, it's now much more bursting, juicy red cherry. There's a, a brightness to it that's um, very enjoyable, and the acidity is giving it a nice length. The alcohol's not impeding the fruit on the finish there at all. There's a sort of a um, red cherry, almost a sort of a zippy red currant note to 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 the finish. There are also there are, there are chocolatey notes of roundness, again not. Um, dominating but fitting in nicely sort of chocolatey cedary notes at the finish beautifully in with the in with the fruit um, this is a really nicely balanced wine whose freshness would sort of um, make it a lovely accompaniment to um, uh, say lighter meats but maybe with rich sauces something that cut through um, the flavors are lasting really nicely um, it, it doesn't have the weight, it doesn't have the sort of the truffly depth that you might get 
with, with something from the um, uh, Cote de Nuit. I, it might develop a little of that, but it, it's, it's certainly not there yet. Um, I'd probably drink this in the next three or four years. I, th I think it's, it, its virtue is its vibrancy and its freshness. Um, it will develop, it, it, it'll develop more complexity, but it, it's such an attractive wine now, I would, I would drink it fairly young. So yes, Chassin Montrachet Le Vieux Vigne from Domaine Vincent Jardin, that's 2018 vintage. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Do join us again. Bye now.